Okay, in this part of the workshop, we're going to focus on sorting out your columns because I've noticed that there's been a couple of glitches with columns, so we'll need to sort that out very quickly. Okay, now that we've kind of worked through how we're going to create our floor slabs, in essence, very roughly, we've built some walls. Okay, we've got some walls in play. Okay, so you can see to start building a building and putting assembling a building is actually not that complicated. Okay, so there's some fundamental principles that we need to follow. But in essence, you can see very quickly, I've managed to put together a very basic 3D model. Look, we'll focus on putting doors and windows, etc. But for now, you can see that a lot of the information has come through quite neatly. Okay, so the last thing I want to focus on is just sorting out the column information. Now when we first, the template file that you were given, if you go to basement 2 for example, so let's go to the lower basement, okay? So, <clears throat> basement 2. What I had picked up, so let's go to VG again, uh, and let's go to Match Links rather, and let's unload the model for the time being. Okay, unload. Okay, good. Now, when we've got two types of columns that we use in the architectural panel. There's an architecture column, and there's a structural column. Okay, now a structural, an architectural column, actually it works like a pier. So if you're building, if you've got a concrete wall and you want to incorporate a structure or a pier into this concrete wall, you'll use a architectural column. Okay. Now I have picked up a gremlin. If I go to columns and I specify the height to basement to maybe level zero, and when I drop the column in, a lot of the times these are not working correctly. I have found a glitch with regards to some of these families that we've been using. So if I go to edit, in, edit family, in the family, what's what's happening remember these are not like walls these are not like floors okay these are families that are you make a family file and then you load it into the project now there's a function when you open up the the concrete column okay so this is a architectural column so family it's a column architectural column now there's a parameter in here that allows you to pre-cut the column so it always looks cut based on how it's driven within the family okay so if I click on ground floor and I go to edit view range what I have noticed is all of this information here is incorrect okay so typically you can keep this at 7500 but what should be happening this should be cut at 1500 so try and match your cut planes so 1500 you want to try and match that information. So if I switch on line weights, now if I load this back into my project overwrite, you'll find that this information will start looking a lot better. Okay, now an architectural column, what it serves two purposes. If I move this into the wall, you'll notice it joins and becomes part of the wall. So that's its purpose. These columns work like piers, um, they're designed to join with these types of walls okay if it stands on its own you'll need to make sure that the material of your concrete wall or concrete matches this so this doesn't work quite the same in the sense that you'll have to go and edit the material so some will allow you to edit the material in the family some will allow you to edit external exteriorly okay and I'll, I'll show you when it comes to structural columns exactly how this works but let's just make sure that this is concrete so make sure it's concrete in situ, so it matches. So when it stands on its own, when it's its own column, you'll notice it will have the same materials as the wall. But remember, when it joins the wall, it becomes part of the wall, and actually, and now it acts as a pier, but in essence, it's still a column within the wall. So just bear that in mind. Okay, so let's put this over here, for example. I'm going to use a steel column for this example. Okay, so I'm going to go to architecture, column, now I'm going to say still structural, st and here you've got a u universal um, beam. So here, if I drop this again, here just make sure it's height, and I'm going to make sure this goes to level zero. And if I drop this in now, 
you will notice now, I'm going to switch off line weights. You'll notice that this will look correct. Okay, this will look correct now, but if I go and edit family, just make sure that the settings in this are set the same. I've noticed these older families that we've been using are very different to the new types of families we're getting with the latest version of Revit. Okay, so these have come from a different library. Make sure that that's level below. And here I'm just gonna make that, um, doesn't really matter, just make it 5,000 for now. Press apply, press okay, okay. And you're gonna show this pre-cut, okay. And you're gonna use symbolic, you can say by family, by project setting. So here the symbolic representation, I'll explain that as well. Okay, so load back into project. Yep, and override existing version, okay. Likewise with this, we've done the same thing. Now, we're working at a difficult scale to see the steel beam, so I'm just gonna switch that off for now. Now, this steel beam, if you go to course mode, you'll find that they disappear, they become symbolic lines rather than the actual 3D model. Okay, so just bear that in mind, we call it level of detail. So sometimes you want a lot of level detail, sometimes you don't. Okay, now, what's interesting, you can combine these two so you can combine an architectural column and a structural column to become, so in essence, when we use steel beams, usually we, in, we enclose them in, in brickwork or they get encased in concrete. Okay, so a lot of the time, these steel beams in a lot of retail, for example, you never see these beams. We actually build a brick, a single skin, skin brick wall around and then plaster it. So it's headed. But technically, this is the structural element. Everything else around it is just basically substrate and fill. Now, what is interesting, you can combine these two together. So if we go to 3D view now, and I switch this on, and I change the scale to 1 to 100 or 1 to 150, you'll notice that these work together. So it's doing that purpose. So you're telling me that you've made a column now so it's an architectural column that's encased a steel column. So for example, let's move this, let's put this in the perimeter of the wall. And say now there was actually a steel column embedded here that goes right through the structure. So if I put that in like that. So hypothetically speaking, say now there was a steel beam. Make sure it snaps onto this and this steel beam probably goes from ground all the way, so it goes from basement all the way to level eight. Now if I go to 3D view, and I go and find that steel beam, now just remember your level of detail. So that steel beam is running through my building somewhere. I just need to find it. Could be behind, it's hiding behind something. Ah, oh, here it is, right on the edge. Okay, so let me just go to my basement and move that somewhere in the middle. So let's move that, copy that, copy, let's move that maybe in the middle of the wall for the time being. Okay, so we've got a 3D view now. You'll notice now that that steel beam will now come through, okay, but when we cut it, so let's just go back to my working 3D view, so let's close that, working 3D view. If I go to my working 3D view now, you will notice now that this steel beam, which is over here, will then cut through all the way to the appropriate level, but it's actually coming through the basement. So if I cut through this again, so I select the section box, and I cut through the basement wall, for example. Oop, I'm cutting in the slab, so a bit more. Okay, now, can't be cutting a slab, there we go. Now, if I go and see this now, you'll notice now that this is actually, it will represent correctly in the plan. Sometimes you'll have to use a cutting, use a cutting regional mask, you, you enable a void within the beam and then you can cut it away. But to serve the purpose that we needed to serve, it's working perfectly. Okay, so that's how you would use a structural beam and a architecture beam. Now, let's just go to level zero. What we need to add, what we need to start adding to this project maybe, let's delete that steel beam, let's delete that steel beam for now. What we need to start adding to this is timber. 
Okay, so now we've got some sort of timber grid. Just remember you can start adding more grids. Just rename these correctly, okay? So I have a slight issue here, so let's address that as well. It's just not viewing correctly, so I'm gonna grab the scope box, I'm gonna pull this down. The scope box I'm gonna pull down a bit more. Good, just so I can start seeing which columns go through and which ones don't. Okay, so that's great, let's go to level zero. We should be seeing our timber columns in essence. So let's just change our view range, view range, make sure that's 1500. Press apply, press OK. Okay, now I'll just go back to section. What I'll need to do with the scope box is pull it right down. So typically, just like that. Good. Now level zero. Now I'm seeing my structural grid above. So these levels I need to copy. And if you copy these, here you can see I've got a lot more intervals because that's my timber structural grid. I know it's not lined up with the objects, but for now, just bear with me. So now, what we can start doing is we can start using timber columns rather. Now, if you don't have these, you can go and access my BIM library. Just remember an OKU 300 library. Now, this is where I've picked up this area with regards to your columns not reading correctly. If you go to families and you go and download some of these old families, these are quite old sometimes, you might find they won't work as well. Okay, so to start with a fresh type of so just using um, information out of the box, out of Revit's library, you're gonna to go to insert, you're gonna to go to load Autodex families, and you're gonna use the cloud function, and you're gonna use the UK libraries. Okay, you let it load. Okay, it depends on how good your internet is. Sometimes this is quite annoying, so you just have to bear with me. Okay, UK, United Kingdom, their library matches ours. Our standards are based broadly on the UK libraries. Okay, so now you're going to go to structural, uh, so it's going to be structural columns. And here you go and pick the category, so you go to wood. Here you're going to pick a win, so a parallel strand lumber, just like that. You can pick a glue lamb, totally up to you. If I load the glue lamb, for example. Okay, now you can pick which type you want. So pick one that will work for you. Press OK. Now, if you go to architecture, column, structural column, now you're going to go from level 0 to level. Okay, I'm working on, so this level 0, and let's just say, sorry, column. You can make these slanted, by the way. Okay, so just bear that in mind. And it looks like you can place them at architectural columns, so it's serving that grid. You can switch on that grid, so you can place these at grid intersections. So just have a look at this information as well that will help you now with this selected okay with this selected so I've got my timber lumber I'm gonna say height I'm gonna take this all the way to level 8 okay technically there we are column per floor but for just for this purpose I'm just gonna say I'm gonna put one there one there okay one there one there one there these will change depending on your design. Okay, By default, if you snap it on a grid, it will start working with the grids. Just remember if you've locked these grids, if you've got this parameter set, so you've got this dimension, just remember that will govern that. But if I've unchecked that, you'll notice that these will move and always live with the grid. So that's it's doing what it needs to do. Okay, Now, if you select this timber, you'll notice that it will give it a family category by default. Okay, so what I would recommend you do is just go and make sure that this, appear, this appears correctly. So cut, make sure that that's a solid. Okay, so make sure that's a solid pattern. It's using our timber. Okay, you might decide foreground. I might use a material. So let's use a material as a foreground rather and give this a gray hatch and then background solid and make that yellow okay press apply press ok now you see by default this will start working now if you want to overwrite the material for all of your columns you right click and you go and say select all instances in, in project and you simply go and pick the material from the material browser that will suit your needs but quite quickly if I go to 3d view 
Remember, I like using that 3D working view because I find that that 3D working view actually gives me a lot more, um, it gives me more control of what I want to see. Okay, I use a 3D working view a lot in the sense that what I like to do sometimes is I go to VG and I go to I isolate. So I go to all, I'm going to say all off floors. So you want to work with just structural elements. So you go to floors, see for columns, switch those on. It depends if you've got embedded structural columns. So just bear that in mind. And then structural columns and maybe framing if you've got some timber beams as well. Press apply, press OK. So here you can see very quickly, I can go and edit my structure. Here I can copy all of these. I can say uh, copy. You can work in 3D. Okay, very, very doable. I would recommend that you switch this to shaded, shaded view, and maybe switch from perspective to author, just if you're gonna work in 3D because it gives you more power. So if you say copy, copy, now you can snap in directions. Okay, now you can align this to an edge of a slab, for example. Okay, so this is quite neat how this works. You can select all of these, select all instances in view, or in project. Now you can see they need to be column, so the top level needs to be minus 380. Okay, so technically it should link to the other timber elements below. Okay, so you can see working with your columns, building this information quickly, Okay, once you get the fundamentals nailed, it will start working quite seamlessly.